Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land. Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer. Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation. Kind of pointless. We know all things. All right. Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Nick here. Gabe, the Night Watchman. And we are here for another reaction and. Just before we started recording, I said, hey, let's check out some Honest Trailers and react to them. And he said, what's that? I couldn't believe it. A huge movie fan like this guy. The guy that's been on the YouTubes every once in a while. The YouTubes. I can't believe he doesn't know what Honest Trailers is. Dude, you know, wow. like, it's funny because after you explained it to me, like, I knew what pitch meeting was. I've seen some pitch meetings, but Honest Trailers, I've never seen. And here's the thing. When first you said Honest Trailers, I was thinking it's about be something about to have to do with that new uh, law that got passed that like oh, yeah. they can get sued for misleading the public <laughs> so i figure okay they need to be honest and there's been so many different uh, um films that are misleading because of the trailer uh you know my man jared leto they made us think that suicide squad he's gonna be all was, over the place yeah he was gonna be over the place and he said hey i recorded three hours worth of <laughs> where's the rest of that work we did they gave him 15 minutes you know what i mean so like it was something like that but i didn't realize after you explained the premise it kind of sounds like pitch meeting like what's the difference yeah. between this and pitch meetings it's so i, I want to say honest trailer came out first and again honest trailer they're, they're very similar in a lot of ways the pitch meeting is hey i got a movie idea for you what do you think and his back and forth between the pitch guy yeah. and the producer yeah. and like really you want to do that this is showing you scenes from the movie and it's just you have to watch it to understand they make fun of the, the plot holes in the movie but very similar in making fun of plot holes and find this or that. And before I started watching Honest Trailers years ago, I was just like so naive and innocent with movies. Like, oh, it's, everything's great. And I ignored the plot holes. Right. And then you watch this and you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? That doesn't even make any sense. Uh, listen, if you start looking at films like that, there's very few films oh, where there aren't plot holes. Like, you could pick apart tons of movies. Uh, I mean... Pretty much every every Star Wars movies lately, you got to marry Sue in there. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. You know, and, and that kind of drives you crazy. But you got to kind of like watch them and, and expect that. Um, unless you're watching a movie that's supposed to like be really grounded or down to earth or something like that. Like, I I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But plot holes don't bother me as much as some. I know some. And, and they don't bother unless the movie's bad or unless I was really excited for it and it was a big disappointment. Then I get ticked. But it's still you watch these and you're just like I didn't, I didn't think about that. That's so true. Just like the pitch meeting. So we're going to go and check this out. We're going to look at Black Adam for our first Honest Trailer. This is a film we both watch. This is a film that we both really, really liked for yeah. crying out loud. We had our top 10 not long ago on this channel. We're going to check that out. We had his honorable mention. Honorable mention. We couldn't put in the top 10. Not the top 10. But we wanted to so badly. So I, I know there's going to be plot holes. I know they're going to probably make fun of... Um, the whole Justice Society and how they were not really... I thought they were awesome. But a lot of people said that, you know, just a quick introduction, like, who are these guys? No one knows who they are. I'm sure they're going to make fun of the uh, the girl who does, like, what, she, the Storm stuff. What's her... Yeah, I, I, you know what? I thought she... I thought the actress was great, but the character didn't really do anything. I'm a big DC fan. I was like, who is this? I had Cyclone no idea. Like I had no idea who she was. So I'm like, yeah, that's like a... That's not even a B-list character, bro. That's like oh. off the page. That's a D-list character. She's like off the back pages. She's I have like no idea who she is. in the background of one picture on a comic. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, huh? <laughs> who? Um, what, what's a, Off the top of my head, what's a plot hole in the film that in the film black adam that i can think of uh i mean they just introduce guys like dr Fate and stuff like that and, and don't give any background or context on them obviously but that's a lot of films that they expect you you know comic book films they do have that problem they're not standalone films you kind of have to know even the whole uh black adam you have to understand prior about the shazam movie that where they explain you know they're getting the god the the power of uh all these uh former gods or whatnot and imbued in them and technically black adam actually has different powers fun fact than um shazam even though right. the it, it manifests differently for each person for right? each person but yeah the the, the uh, his shazam stands for something different than um the shazam and if you know Ooh. that leave it in the comments below all right so let's go ahead and check this out if you like our reaction to this please don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know do you want us to react to more honest trailers and uh, let's go ahead and get into this. You're not going to ruin my love for Black Adam. But you may sway me a little bit. All right, here we go.
Oh, so these are people requested of Doom Black Adam. The studio oh, yeah. who hides the hero's faces in their intro because they're all about to get recast. <laughs> and they got this a epic voice to their breakout hit, <laughs> they're all about Shazam, to get where Shazam's greatest nemesis finally faces off against whoever these guys are in a film. <laughs> I told you. The selling point is the after credit scene. Whoa, The Rock is going to fight Superman. He's gone. Black Adam. <laughs> Slow down the so old noggin true. for a superhero flick that asks nothing of its audience but to open up and say, Durr, where the themes never get deeper than talk versus punch. Fighting won't solve this. I disagree. Me too. Characters blurt out the backs of their own trading cards. The nanobots were injected into my bloodstream by this really messed up scientist who kidnapped me when I was 15. And you can feel the screenwriter writing, <laughs> put something better here I later than never going back for a second draft. Our mission is to protect global stability. We're here to restore peace to Kandak, and we will use force if necessary. Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. Exposit me, baby. <laughs> Intergang has taken over Kandak for its precious Eternium. Now, Black Adam will come out of his cave to stop them. But this resurrected Middle Eastern savior is less Jesus and more Zeus Zeus. Jesus. As Black Dude. Adam rises oh, oh. to the top of the DC Universe's hierarchy of power, totally a thing, and just keeps on rising. <laughs> just keeps on and rising. rising. Yeah, that was awesome. Yes, that was awesome. Until he's a video game character with infinite health and five stars on GTA. <laughs> Dude, that scene was sick. I don't oh, care. All these visuals, are, doesn't it make you more excited about it? Yeah, we know. Can we just end the movie then? Return to ancient times when the legend of Teth Adam began and meet a young boy destined to become the people's champion and perhaps someday deliver the people's elbow, uniting them oh, all under the yes. symbol of Rockefeller Records in a series of fake out flashbacks that are supposed to make you think this yes. kid is young Black Adam. But the twist gets spoiled when they keep showing the rock right next to him. There. That's you, Dwayne. We can still tell it's you when you're facing away. No one else looks that much like a really buff hot dog. Stop. Fighting I did not catch that. Just did you? No, thank you. Repeatedly. No, no. Until everyone gets bored with the idea. How long are we going to keep doing this? They're a crack team of whoever Amanda Waller can get on the phone. There's Hawkman, a billionaire crime fighter <laughs> that Bruce Wayne just kind of forgot about when he was putting the Justice League together. Dr. Fate, a mystic who gets all hot and bothered whenever he yeah, rubs the awesome. tip of his helmet. <laughs> no. Adam Smasher, a bumbling oaf you bring along when you really need the locals to hate you. I am so sorry, was that expensive? But like his uncle says, hey, forget about it. And Maxine, <laughs> a manic pixie dream tornado with all the powers and charm of a human vape. Meanwhile, among the mere mortals, there's Adriana. She can read. Men were given the gift of magic. God of gods, six immortal elders by name. Death is the only path to life this big guy he can sing Baby, come back! i love and this guy on. he's so cool to the he's max funny. he has seven different skateboards kind of meet this do over of freddie yes. freeman from shazam with less charisma let me clean up your outfit a little bit get a cape change your name <laughs> his name is uh Captain Sparkle Fingers. No, it's not. No, it's not. A kid who knows all the DC heroes <laughs> except Shazam. Nobody ever mentioned Shazam. Superman, Batman, Aquaman, you're way more stacked than any of them. And in the year of our Lord 2022, he's still doing the let's work on your catchphrase joke. Tell them the men in black sent you. Well, well yes, but, but not to me. Say it to the bad guys. But before you zap them. Nailed it. And just in time for the 30 year anniversary of Terminator 2. But still. Good job. And if you want Dude, I, I, I still, I love that catch Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. So even though the hierarchy of the DC universe <laughs> has actually changed, Everything's sending the changing. rock into full-blown damage control mode. Our margins don't live and die by box office numbers. It has long, uh, um, very long uh, tentacles. And most of the DCEU died on the way back to their home planets. Make room for a meat and potato story <laughs> that gets the job done. 
a Pierce Brosnan who's only getting more easy on the eyes. And most importantly, it's got just enough PG-13 brutality to give grown men an alibi <laughs> for watching a $400 million cartoon. See there, honey? Here at that other man's <laughs> arm off. Only big boys are allowed to see that. Now let's go get you a video game on the way home. What do you say? <laughs> Starry. Wayne the Kool-Aid so. Man Johnson. Kool-Aid Man. Oh yeah, Cash Money's Birdman, Gold Bond, Medicated Powers, Can't Man, <laughs> Halle Barely, <laughs> Laura Soft, Halle the anti-anti-hero, wow. so wait, the hero? I root myself today to see if I still feel, and the Snyder Cut. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> Adam ruins everything. <laughs> oh, oh, right, the main villain. I remember literally nothing about him, and neither will you. <laughs> he did a sky beam. That's cute. T who you, yeah, yeah I really buddy. Don't remember who he was. I <laughs> am mighty red. Just reads these things in voice. My eyeballs. The line from Taken. Davy, Davy Crockett, <laughs> king of the wild frontier. Autobots in trouble. Exploding planet. Oh yes, yeah. you did so good with that. All right, so that was your first honest trailer. What uh, what's the verdict? <laughs> It's funny. I mean, they still, of course, he pointed out some of the things we we knew that going in as yeah. far as like uh, plot holes. They don't give you a lot of background. Like, okay. and I was curious he was going to mention the switcheroo too. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I I did not notice the switcheroo. Maybe people immediately in the theater said, "Oh, that's the Rock actually standing by." Now, was that. that a scene from the first time we see it, or when they go back and they reveal who he is? I don't with that side view because if I did, if I did know, I don't think I did notice. If I did, I probably would have thought, well, I know um, Dwayne's, it, Dwayne Johnson's in this, so maybe it's just someone that looks like him as a relative. I don't know. Right. But I don't think I noticed that at all if I, that's in the beginning part of the movie. Yeah, I didn't notice that at all. So if that was in the beginning part of the movie and not just a flashback, then I guess that, you know, better on them to be able to yes. pick that out. Uh, were there plot holes? Of course. I thought the black man, uh, the, what was it, the the, the man in black yeah. uh, uh, joke landed. I thought it was funny. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I enjoyed that but one. But I think the kid was was a little not not the most likable character yeah he so didn't like, do, and he's all throughout he wasn't as good as uh freddie uh from obviously um yeah. or uh, many others and i get like the your catchphrase thing at last that joke lasted throughout the entire movie right but what dwayne the rock johnson did with it was awesome yeah that's what I, that, that's that's what i was like i i agree with him about certain plot. again i don't understand certain um i didn't understand the bad guy First and foremost, and he, he's right. I cannot even remember who he was. No. He was somebody. He was that one guy who was related to the was one getting guy. Possessed by it or something I, yeah, like that. I don't know. So that was kind of weak. I would have rather it had just been him versus the Justice Society. Absolutely. We can't take out the Justice Society now. Let's bring in the big gun Superman. And now you know that's probably the film I would have written. You know what I mean? Yeah. And but it is what it is. It is what it is. It was funny though. I tell you what. I hate when they attack something you love because then you're like, oh, yeah, why didn't I? Why wasn't <laughs> That's I more what I'm critical? Saying. I'm like, why wasn't I more critical? But when you love something, you're willing to, like, you know, and we we're never, DC fans, so I'm willing to overlook those things. Even with our bias, I don't think either of us ever said, like, oh, it's, it's it literally, didn't, it's a top 10 movie. It didn't even or, make the top 10. It's year. a great comic book yeah. film. No. Or it's one of the best of all time. Absolutely not. But I went into it like four weeks after it came out, after all the hate. After certain journalists or movie reviewers, critics had said it was the worst movie they've ever seen in their entire life. Stop. I heard all of that Stop. noise, and I sit down and I watch in a theater with like five other people, and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was very entertaining. There were some parts where I was kind of yawning at here or there, but for the most part, I was thoroughly impressed. And I'm thinking, like, how does this get so much hate? But it's all subjective. That's how films are. It's yeah. all about opinions. Whoever saw that and said it was the worst film ever... That's their opinion, and I, I guess I kind of buy it, but I don't really. But these are just so hilarious because yeah. you go into these 
you can't you kind of put your feelings outside the door you go into these just seeing what are they going to say and then when they do the different names at the end sometimes those hit sometimes those don't land right. but those were absolutely hilarious that's funny i mean it's funny when you talk when you talk Adam about ruins how, everything. how people and i'm unfortunate with those people i don't know because i love dc i take it personally and a lot of people were blasting it like oh same thing critics worst i've ever seen like did you miss fantastic four the josh trank audition I i'm sorry the eternals this is the worst thing you ever seen oh my. stop it stop it marvel fanboy because you know that's what it is it's just, oh. you know Stop it. Trolls. Worst thing you've ever seen? Again. Fantastic Four, Josh Trank. All I gotta say. All I gotta say. Watch it's, that. It's always gonna be Transformers last night. Oh! Let us know in the comments what is the worst film you've ever seen. And if you agree with either Nick or myself, I say Josh Trank, Fantastic Four is probably the... I mean, it's certified hot god beige. And Nick says... Oh, absolutely. Last night. 100%. Transformer, the last night. Now, it's tough for me because you know... I hate, oh, Michael Bay. Oh, Michael Bay. I hate me some Michael Bay. And I don't even know. Did Michael Bay even direct that one? I think they kicked him off. Oh, maybe he didn't direct the ball. I don't know. Was he gone by then? Let us know. Also, let us know you want us to react to some more honest trailers. And if so, which ones you want us to react to. With all that being said, until next time. We know all things.